Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Haza. Today I want to talk to you about ESL speaking activities and how you can ensure that your students are getting enough time to practice and to speak English while you're there in the classroom with you. So first of all, I want to start out being completely honest and saying there were many obstacles and I did not always do the perfect job when I started teaching. Um, it's kind of hard to, to know what were the reasons of why maybe my students didn't participate as much or didn't feel as confident as they should have in speaking English. But um, I brought it down to a couple of things. One, the lack of materials and equipment. My school was not really focusing on languages, so there weren't a ton of materials or a language lab or anything where I could really immerse students in the English language. Number two, a lot of work to create my curriculum. It took me hours and hours. Like I started out with basically nothing. And while it gave me a lot of freedom to come up with these activities and anything that I wanted to teach on my own, it was also very time consuming. Um, then there was the lack of knowledge of my students. Many of them had never learned English before, didn't know anything. So we started out with lots of words and phrases and like really had to take our time to gradually move up to bigger concepts. Then there were the big class sizes. I had over 30, sometimes 40 students in a class. And um, just by that number and the short amount that we met each week, it was really hard to encourage each and every one of them to be speaking, to be using the language. Um, then there was very little student participation. I'm sure that all had something to do with the above um, mentioned points. But my students were kind of shy, maybe more introvert. Um, like I said, this was a new language for them, so they were afraid of making mistakes, of others laughing about them. Um, so it was really hard. There were a few that would be okay, maybe trying to read something or saying something, but the rest of them stayed quiet. And then my biggest worry was there are no materials really out there with speaking activities. Everything I had was like focused on writing and reading. Like there were a lot of worksheets, there were a lot of grammar things, but really when it came to speaking or even listening, maybe there was a CD and sometimes there was some kind of online component so I could download some um, audio files, but nothing interactive really for the students to work with. So um, getting my students to speak became really one of my biggest challenges while I was teaching English. Um, now let's go to the question, why is it even so important to motivate my students or your students to speak? Well, think about when you ask someone if they're learning or knowing a language. You don't ask, do you read English or do you write English? You say, do you speak English? And same in any of the other languages that are out there. So speaking is a very natural thing that will probably be most important for students and language learners, no matter what language they learn, um, when it comes to being in that country, being immersed, um, being able to use the language, because they're probably not going to be writing as much with it. They're going to be wanting to speak to people and having interactions. Um, and then same, think about our regular days, like how much time a day do you spend writing or reading versus speaking or listening? Most of us have constant conversations throughout the day where we have to listen and speak. So it's very natural to learn a language through listening and processing and then imitating the speech sound. So, I mean, think about little babies. That's how they learn a language. So why aren't we doing that in foreign language classes or classrooms? Um, now I wanna move into ESL speaking activities that really work. Uh, it took me a lot of time to find the right things that would work in my class. And for you, it will probably take a little bit of trial and error. Some things that I'm showing you might work and other things might not. So it really depends on the group of students you have, what kind of materials you have available. But I wanna share a couple of tips with you. Number one, it's okay to make mistakes. I found that very important to give my students that as kind of like a basic rule. Not only did I have classroom rules on like how I wanted our classes to be structured and how we had to respect one another and so forth. I also made it very clear that making mistakes was okay. I even let the students point out when I make mistakes because I was not perfect, trust me. So 
And that became kind of a game and they were really loving that. And that kind of like took away some of their fear or embarrassment when they also realized, hey, even our teacher is not perfect. Um, number two, overcome cultural barriers. For me, um, a lot of my students came from backgrounds or had known school as something where you were listening and maybe taking notes and observing, but it wasn't really an interactive thing. So I sat down and actually had a conversation with them about like their previous learning experiences. And that really helped to understand there are some cultural barriers or like even like the type of school they went to before that made them kind of like think I'm not here to participate or speak. I'm here to observe and, you know, just learn from watching exposure. That is one of the biggest um, tips that I can give you. Expose your students as much as possible to as many authentic texts and listening activities, videos, audio files, whatever possible. And finding those, I will show you later what I have found to be a true solution to getting kind of like, um, like around finding everything that you need for your classes. Um, real time or real life situations and appropriate level. Sometimes you might think that your students are ready for something when they're not. And then you have those students in your class that are ready for something harder, but then you have still 10 or so that are struggling with a concept that they just learned. So it is hard to find that balance, but it's also very important for your students for you to find the balance between who do I still need to help with and how can I move those forward that are ready to um, move on and learn more. And then lastly, timing is everything and give students a chance to participate uh, and practice pronunciation. Timing is everything means I sometimes thought maybe having a speaking activity right after class started would be good. But I noticed that often those were just the conversations that they had in between classes anyway. So it didn't really like spark their interest and didn't really get them talking in English. They just kind of carried on the conversation that they had before. So I switched it around and started with something else and then added in the speaking activities at the end instead of having those as a warm up. And then practicing pronunciation, that is something without um, the smart class hub that I'll show you later, I would have never been able to have my students do. Um, it really helps to have some kind of program with artificial intelligence that can really give your students feedback and allow them to practice words and phrases in the foreign language that they're learning um, with instant feedback without you, the teacher, having to sit there and um, grade them or correct them all the time. So let's look at those pronunciation activities. Um, like I said, I ended up using the smart class hub they have a full english curriculum from beginners to advanced and um, i believe over 1200 activities in there um, in each of the levels so there's a wide variety of activities um, many of them auto graded and i want to show you how this pronunciation activity really works and how it gets your english students to be speaking Flashcards are a great way for students to practice vocabulary words. And with the help of the Smart Class software, not only can students practice the words, but they can also see them presented in a sentence so that they can hear it, kind of like get the context of it, and um, then they can record themselves saying it. So this is powered by artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence will be reading what you as a teacher type out, or if you're using our um, let's talk English curriculum. We already have flashcards for every single section, every single chapter of our full curriculum prepared for you. So what it looks like, this is what it looks like for the students. You can see the flashcards on the left side. You can click through those. You will always have an image with the vocabulary word on the bottom. And then on the right here, you see the sentences. They're typed out. Um, and students have a chance to click the definition button. If you, as the teacher, put in the translation of the word in the native language, it will appear here. Um, the word was app, and I put in the German translation, which would be the app. Not very hard <laughs> for this one. But um, what is wonderful is that students now can listen to this sentence, not just read it, but listen to it. 
and then practice their pronunciation. So take ownership of their learning, really have a chance to practice without being judged. It's okay to make mistakes. I mentioned that earlier. Um, so we want students to be okay making mistakes and improving and working on their pronunciation. So let's listen to this. I just downloaded a new app. So after listening then, I'll click the click and talk button, repeat the sentence and see what the AI picks up. I just downloaded a new app. I hit stop and then I'll see written out what the AI got. If I'm not happy with this, I want to repeat. I just downloaded a new app. So students can re-listen, can compare what the AI heard, what the original sentence was. So let's say they make a mistake. That's okay. They can go back and try this over and over and over. Let's do another one. Can I use your charger to charge my phone? Can I use your charger to charge my phone? And again, I got 100%, students might not get 100% right away, um, and that's okay. They can repeat this, they can practice, and do it as often as they would like. That was the pronunciation activities that I found very, very helpful for my students to be using. And then um, after those, um, they became a little bit more confident. They all of a sudden came to class and were like, you know what, maybe I will read today, maybe I will um, participate a little bit more. It really kind of took away that fear of making mistakes. They somehow felt um, a little bit more motivated, more confident in their language abilities. Um, and on top of that, um, there's also the individual ESL speaking activities. So lots of either open recordings where students have to answer for prompts, um, segmented recordings where they have to listen to something or read something and then answer questions about it, or the third option are continuous recordings where students have to continuously record either over a video while they're narrating it or um, maybe have a question, like a, a real conversation scenario where they have to listen and then answer. And here's another example of one of those. Here is one of our open recording activity examples. This one is taken out of our B1 Let's Talk English full curriculum, and it's about different types of morning people. Students will have to read this article first. They can zoom in to be able to read a little bit better. When they're done reading, they have four questions that they have to answer in an open recording. So they can talk freely and take as much time as they want to for each of these questions. When they're ready, they hit record. I am more of a night owl. I like staying up late at night, um, catching up on some work, reading, sometimes going for a walk when the weather is nice, um, talking to my husband on the porch. Um, and mornings are not my favorite time of the day just because I don't like waking up early and then I'm always kind of tired until I finally wake up. When they're done, they can pause the recording. They can replay it. I am more of a night owl. I like staying up late at night, um, catching up on some work, reading, sometimes. When they're happy with it, they can continue recording for the next questions. Um, if they're not happy with it, they can select the part that they don't like. Let's see, okay, I really did not like my last two sentences here. I'm going to erase my recording from this cursor position. And then I can continue talking and uh, maybe fixing my answer for number one or continuing on to number two, three, and four. So this really gives the students a lot of flexibility. They can really take ownership of their own learning because they're able to re-listen and replay what they have said. They're able to erase the entire recording or from a certain point onwards and then re-record and make sure that they really get it right before they submit this activity to their teacher. All right, that was one of the open recording activities. Also want to show you another one. Here's another example recording. for our segmented recordings. This example is taken out of our B1 Let's Talk English curriculum. And it's a vocabulary practice and students have two stimuli. So they have to look at this schedule and then they also have to listen to these questions. Again, the questions come from an audio file and you as the teacher can select when 
there are pauses so that students answer these questions. So you don't have to build in these pauses in your audio file. You get to do that with the hub later to select the segments in between. So students start recording by listening to the first question and then automatically it switches to a recording of their own answer. Number one, how many classes does Rob have on Thursdays? I'm going to click in here and then I can see this and I look, oh, Thursday, two. Two. Rob has two classes on Thursday. Done. And that's when I move on to the next question. Number two. What time does beginner snowboarding end? Beginner snowboarding ends at 3.50 p.m. Click done to move on to the next question. I'm going to stop right here just because I want to show you how students can, again, take ownership of their own learning experience by re-listening to what they have said and making sure they got their answers right. So let's say I don't want to listen to the first one. I'm pretty sure I got that one right, but I want to listen to the second one again because I think I was talking about something else and not quite right. So I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to replay it. The little green bar on the bottom, that's everything that the student says, so their voice. And then the blue one on top, that's the original questions that were recorded. So I'm going to just listen to my section or my question number two. Beginner snowboarding ends at 3.50 p.m. Okay, well, I, I want to answer a little bit faster, so let's just say I'm going to redo this one. Number two. What time does beginner snowboarding end? Beginner snowboarding ends at 3.50 p.m. And then I re-record over that. Hmm, let's check number one again. Maybe that was the one that I didn't like so much. So I want to re-record this one without all my talking in the beginning, but just by giving the answer. So I'm going to just hit record again. Number one, how many classes does Rob have on Thursdays? Rob has two classes on Thursdays. Right, and it overwrites, and now I can listen to this one again just to make sure that I got it right. Rob has two classes on Thursdays. Okay, that's much better. There's no other stuff that I'm saying before that has nothing to do with the question. So that's how students can really look again at, okay, did I do this right? Am I happy with my answers? So, so students can re-record here if they have um, the ability or if they're not happy with something. Other than that, we have ESL activities for partners. Um, that also gets the students talking a lot, especially with their language partners or groups in class. Um, for that, there is a part that is called the Smart Class Live, which allows teachers to pair students in the classroom to record their conversations for students to be paired up with someone that they're not sitting next to, quickly switch partners around, um, Teachers can listen in on to the conversations that um, students are having. They can share screens and whatnot. So it's a really modern day language lab solution that is possible to add on to the smart class hub that there is. Um, another activity here, it's a grouping activity. You will find um, two to three of these activities at the end of each um, section or chapter in the full ESL curriculum. And then um, if you really are um, interested in finding out more about the either the ESL curriculum or we also have a German and a Spanish supplemental curriculum that focuses on speaking activities, feel free to visit our website, check out other blog posts. We show a lot of different types of activities that are possible in the hub, how you can create your own activities in there on top of what is already in there. Um, lots of other language tips that we share. Um, feel free to follow us on social media or check out our videos on YouTube. We have a whole playlist there of all grammar videos um, for your ESL learners. And as usual, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me um, directly. Thank you.